Hello, seventh standard. So you see children, have a good day, have a nice day. I hope you are doing well. And uh, today we are going to do video number twenty, as chapter ten, respiration in organism as revision. We are just going to revise. I am I am just going to sum up the lesson. What you have learned so far, you have learned in uh, April, May, certain topic here. Yeah? That I have again revised recently, and so based on those two videos, today we are going to revise or discuss chapter ten, respiration in organism, right? And this portion will be included for our half yearly examination. As I said in previous videos, we used to write. Periodic assessment one and two, terminal one and two, unit test that yeah. I'm in the half a day portion. We are going to revise, right? Now then we got this respiration. Respiration is one of the most important living characteristics. I hope you remember. Huh? So taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide is called respiration. Taking in oxygen, giving out carbon dioxide is known as respiration, right? But normally we say taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide, it is well indicated by the animals, and we name it as breathing. We use the term breathing. So yeah. Whereas in plants, that also respiration is taking place. At the same time, that is cellular respiration. So first, breathing. <coughs> then second one, cellular respiration will occur. What is it? Respiration we know when it is taking place in the cells. It is cellular respiration. At the same time, this cellular respiration. Is mainly noticed in plants as the food prepared. Sorry, the food prepared by the process photosynthesis by the grain leaves. It has to be utilized into usable energy. It has to be made into usable energy. So this preparing food by the process of photosynthesis, the end products are. Carbohydrates and oxygen, and this oxygen is evolved as a byproduct. Yeah, all the and this glucose or carbohydrate or starch is made into usable energy. That usable energy formation utilization is cellular respiration. So normally we say in plants. Photosynthesis is a constructive process, whereas an or anabolic process, whereas respiration is a destructive process, where catabolic process. Both together in combination of anabolism, catabolism and anabolism together is forming metabolism. Are you clear? Huh? So the same. Metabolism is taking place in animals also, and that it takes part different organs in uh, animal, different organ and organ system. They are taking part in all these metabolic activities. I hope you understand. Hmm? So now we talk about breathing, taking in oxygen, giving up carbon dioxide. Now, what are the organs for breathing? There are different organs for different animals for breathing. So yeah. So now, first, amoeba, as usual, lowermost animal. Amoeba is body surface. Amoeba body surface. Then again, earthworm. Again, it is. Body surface, normally we call it as moist 
skin. So yeah, and in uh, insects, in insects, it is by a structure called its spiracles. In insects, it is known as spiracles. Are you clear? Yeah. And then in uh, higher animals, it is by normally lungs. Normally lungs. Okay. And then this respiration, it is as normally we call it as cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous respiration, pulmonary respiration, pulmonary respiration, and gill respiration. Gill respiration normally and then fish. And all aquatic animals will breathe through gills. That is typical example, different kinds of fishes. Check. Same way, frog, when they are in larval form, they respire through gills. I, I hope you are following. Huh? And the pulmonary respiration are the lungs. Okay. And the cutaneous respiration, it is skin. Normally, in frog and earthworm, the moist skin, uh, that is uh, taking in oxygen, giving out carbon dioxide, is done through moist skin in earthworm and frog. So it is known as cutaneous respiration. I hope you are able to follow this. Yeah? So respiration in lower organism is of different types. So yeah. So now, <coughs> see for example, see this figure. This is earthworm. Okay, and it is having moist skin. So oxygen is getting in and carbon dioxide is given out. This figure. And this is spiracle. In uh, insects, for example, cockroach, the entire segment, they are provided with trachea. And each tracheal tubule, they are opening outside to the exterior through an opening called spiracle through which carbon dioxide is given up, oxygen is taken in. I hope people follow this. Huh? Then this figure, another, can you recognize? Huh? This figure, it is fish. This is fish, respiring through gills. Sorry? And these two, this is frog. Frog, frog will respire through skin. Frog, when it respires through skin, it is called cutaneous respiration. Yeah, the skin, moist skin. So in the frog, the oxygen getting in. In the way, carbon dioxide given out. I hope you understand. Huh? So this is cutaneous respiration. So this frog, normally respiring, through three different methods. One is cutaneous respiration, that is uh, through the skin, and when it is in tadpole stage, it is gill respiration, that is uh, that is called tadpole stage, and uh, when it becomes adult, it respires through the lungs, that is pulmonary respiration. I hope you are able to follow this. So that is. Respiration. Hmm? Normally, respiration, we say it has to be made into usable energy. So, for example, the number of times an organism breathes. The number of times an, organi an organism breathes in a minute is called breathing rate or it is known as respiratory so the average breathing rate of an adult at rest normally 12 to 20 times per minute and this rate of respiration is differing based on the different activities suppose 
when they are uh, at rest breathing rate will be normal when athlete is uh, breathing breathing rate will be faster when athlete is climbing the stairs sorry when a person is climbing the stair breathing rate will be faster and when we are doing work faster that in the uh, stress or tension breathing rate will be faster so normally breathing rate differs from different activity and also from person to person i hope you understand hmm? so the life process involved in the release of energy from food is known as respiration i repeat the life process involved in the release of energy is known as respiration i hope you understand hmm? so the process of respiration it involves two steps one is breathing which is the physical process of inhaling or taking in or inspiring the oxygen rich air and exhaling out or giving out or expiring out is a carbon dioxide is known as breathing right the next step is cellular respiration which is the process that releases energy by breaking down food molecule i hope you understand this eh? so there are two steps of respiration one is oxygen breathing another one cellular respiration are you clear hmm? and then as i said different organisms will have different respiratory organ now what is the structure of uh, lungs in human what can we say human lung what can we say structure of human lung can you remember the diagram this is the diagram human lungs we have a so now this human lung what is the respiratory passage human lung respiratory passage it is <coughs> first is external nostril external nostril and then nasal cavity external nostril nasal cavity and then it enters to pharynx it enters to pharynx and then larynx the rings and then trachea trachea is also known as windpipe trachea is also known as windpipe it is formed of c shaped inverted c shaped cartilaginous ring this is c shaped inverted c shaped cartilaginous rings cartilage as we know it is not a bone it is a soft tissue which is flexible cartilaginous rings okay and that trachea is branching into two as bronchial bronchus <coughs> and then that enters into the lungs that enters into the lungs as bronchioles bronchi and bronchioles in the la diagram i have already given a good diagram earlier with the oxygen and the part in the diagram you know only rough diagram okay now this bronchioles in turn it is formed of bubble like gap pockets like this bubble like gap pocket called alveoli bubble like gap pocket called gap alveoli okay and this uh, lungs they rest on a band of tissue called diaphragm a band of tissue called diaphragm and this diaphragm is playing a major role in respiration i hope you are able to follow huh? so now the, the respiratory tract first the process 
is called the inspiration. The process is called inspiration. Process is known as inspiration or inhalation or taking in oxygen. Okay. External nasal, the mucula, external nasal, the mucula, the nasal cavity, followed by the pharynx, larynx, the voice box, larynx or voice box, and that opens into the trachea. Trachea and gira marco, uniform size and shape, uniform size and shape, right? And it is inverted C shape, cartilaginous rings. It branches into two bronchus and the bronchi, each one is bronchus and then bronchus entering into spongy elastic lungs and that in turn bronchus is branching into bronchioles and these bronchioles they are nothing but alveoli air pockets which are rich in blood capillaries. So that is inspiration. Now this lungs, they are safely protected inside the rib cage. Rib cage is a particular skeleton person. Sorry, axial skeleton and a particular skeleton person. Axial skeleton, it is a skull or cranium or brain box. Another one, rib cage. And third one, vertebral column. Yeah. So in the rib cage, the lungs and heart, they are protected well. I hope you understand this. Huh? And this uh, uh, ribs, they are formed of intercostal muscle. Rib cage, it is formed of intercostal muscle. Okay, and during inspiration, this intercostal muscle, we are naming it as internal intercostal and external intercostal muscle. So, yeah. And during respiration, first inspiration is taking place. What happens when we inhale oxygen? When we breathe in oxygen, the oxygen this diaphragm, the base sheet of the lungs, basement, this basal sheet of the uh, lungs diaphragm, it is becoming flattened. Upon the rib cage, the thorax, that uh, rib cage will become vertical and expand. Understand very good. Abhi uri nirole the diaphragm mele kohu in the rib cage yonde expand lagu. I hope you understand. Huh? What happens? Apko ya pressure in the oxygen when it is pushed forward, oxygen is entering into the lungs. Arke two movement kete one yonde external intercostal muscle will form that and diaphragm will move up. Rende event, muscles on the rende event, first day, diaphragm will become flattened and contraction of external intercostal muscle will become the chest cavity widened. Apo, ulla air pressure kami air kandala, ulla the inhale for the oxygen, it is pushed in. Then it is exchanging with the carbon dioxide then vice versa, relaxation of the diaphragm, regaining its dome shape and internal intercostal muscle will contract that way or carbon dioxide will be given out and that process is expiration. That process is expiration. I hope you understand. And above reverse uh, uh, track of the uh, respiratory process as carbon dioxide, bronchioles, bronchus, trachea, well, by larynx, pharynx, 
nasal cavity, external nostril. And we will be ready to I hope you understand this. Eh? So here, let's understand. <coughs> Follow this one minute. See, respiration. In the diagram, macula comes in respiration. Remember, this one inspiration, expiration. This one during inspiration. This one during expiration. I hope you understand. Eh? So here, diaphragm become flattened. The thoracic cavity volume of the thoracic cavity expands. Apo pressure on the Ulla kami arke, so oxygen is pushed in. Ila vande relaxation, again uh, internal intercostal muscle will push the carbon dioxide out. Sorry. So now from the nasal cavity, an organ called pharynx, from the nasal cavity, an organ called pharynx, which has two openings. The esophagus, foot pipe, and the windpipe or trachea. And the trachea branches into two smaller tubes, bronchi, singular bronchus. And each bronchus opens into the lungs. Each bronchus opens into the lungs. See? And inside the lung, the bronchus divides into many tiny tubules called bronchioles and these bronchioles enter into very small 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 gas sacs called alveoli singular alveolus and there are more than 300 million alveoli are present in each human lung and the alveoli are richly supplied with blood through a network of capillaries. Capillaries are actually again arteries, it is arterioles, veins, it is venules. Right. So, this is the path taken by inhale here, it is the reverse order, exhale here. I hope you understand. So, just beneath the lungs, you can a particular industry, you can do a how air enters the lungs? Just beneath the lungs is a thin sheet of muscle called diaphragm. <coughs> and during inhalation, diaphragm contracts and moves down. And the muscles attach to the ribs, the external, the first external intercostal muscle contract and pull the ribs outwards. So, volume of the thoracic cavity will increase. As a result, the size of the chest cavity or thoracic cavity increases and the lungs expand. Chariya? And oxygen rich air is inhaled into the lungs at this stage. And during expiration, diaphragm relaxes and moves up. And the muscles of the ribs relax and the ribs will move inward. As a result, size of the chest cavity decreases and lungs contract and air rich in carbon dioxide is expelled out from the body. I hope you are able to follow this. Now, this is an experiment. Now, the lesson explained is the chain, bottle comes in. This is the bottle. We take a bottle. Here on the for a balloon fit panna and then mail a one hole car clean and a bottle moody lover make a single hole. Then you introduce a straw, mama drinks full from the pool rings and the straw order rather end the you attach a balloon, you tie a balloon, right? So when you blow air, this diaphragm will expand. So oxygen is entering in. Then when you lose it, then carbon dioxide will be given out. I hope you understand. I hope I remember. You, you can recollect the experiment that I showed it. Right? So first it is the Y tube referring to trachea. 
and bronchi idu vandu trachea ipdi renda period vandu bronchi inda bell jar vandu chest cavity inda bottle vandu chest cavity then balloon da lungs okay and the rubber shape is representing the diaphragm rubber shape representing the diaphragm i hope you are able to follow this ah huh? clear at the chest now this cellular respiration next one it is cellular respiration as we have two types one is aerobic respiration and another one is anaerobic respiration all right right one is aerobic respiration and another one anaerobic respiration so here yeah, here aerobic <coughs> aerobic respiration as c6 h12 o6 plus 6 o2 will give 6 co2 plus 6 h2o plus illuna ne kodikana 2009 kilo joules of energy this is the equation for aerobic respiration are clear ha huh? aerobic respiration you have equation c6 h12 o6 and the glucose that is prepared during photosynthesis right and then or animals where the food that is taken in the carbohydrate the energy is broken down into usable form so this is c6 h12 o6 plus 6 o2 in presence of oxygen so respiration in presence of oxygen it is so aerobic glucose where c6 h12 o6 in presence of oxygen it is made into usable form and as a result carbon dioxide is released and that energy released in usable form the 2009 kilo joules of energy now as it is taking place in presence of oxygen it is called anaerobic respiration okay same way when it is in the absence of oxygen and it is in the absence of oxygen c6 h12 o6 will give ethyl alcohol will give ethyl alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus 50 kilo joules of energy so yeah. and this ethyl alcohol formation anaerobic respiration this is anaerobic respiration so this ethyl alcohol is one method of by product another one is lactic acid formation lactic acid formation so we will just continue so we will continue this uh, aerobic respiration respiration that takes place in presence of oxygen and it results in the formation of carbon dioxide and water and releases energy and that releasing energy we number it as 2900 kilo joules the unit will be kilo joules okay and all animals and plants carry out aerobic respiration and you should know the equation c6 h12o6 plus 6o2 that will give 6 co2 6 water plus energy in the equation one again a gap over there it is the reverse of photosynthesis equation reverse of equation for photosynthesis and then c6 h12 sorry 6 co2 plus 6 h2o in the air order in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll will give glucose or starch or carbohydrate plus oxygen 
and this oxidative is given out as by product. Remember the hmm? so it is just the reverse of photosynthesis equation. I hope you understand. Right? Now <coughs> this type of reaction is called oxidation reaction. This aerobic respiration, this type of reaction, it is called oxidation reaction. Should you? Whereas animals and human beings cannot think of life without oxygen. But still, there are there are some organism that breathe without oxygen. So they did some organism they take energy through a process called anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is made of cellular respiration that does not use oxygen. That we say in the absence of oxygen to break down food molecules and release energy, right? Then as a result of this uh, anaerobic respiration, the byproducts are one time, one method of anaerobic respiration, it is ethyl alcohol, carbon dioxide and 50 kilojoules of energy. And in another uh, method of anaerobic respiration, that is in the absence of oxygen, C6, H12O6 and lactic acid formation. From the lactic acid formation, we can we have uh, what to say, these athletes when they run or people, those who are jogging or some people when they stretch leg at night, people suffer from muscle cramp. Yeah? And this muscle cramp is formed by this anaerobic respiration. So when that particular part of the portion in the body, when the cramp is formed, when there is insufficient supply of oxygen, that is uh, in a totally absence of oxygen in progress, there is accumulation of lactic acid. So, and then when the person is at rest, when the person becomes normal, when he gets normal supply of oxygen, that muscle cramp will go off. So, that is lactic acid formation. So, it will be normal at rest, the cramp will go off. I hope you understand. Hmm? Anaerobic respiration occurs in human muscle cells. Sometimes when we exercise heavily, the body cannot supply enough oxygen to the muscles to completely break down the sugars into carbon dioxide and water. So as a result, glucose is broken into lactic acid. So this is called lactic acid and this method is called fermentation. Normally we use the term fermentation. So this is glucose in the absence of oxygen, lactic acid plus energy is formed. I hope you understand this. Yeah? Now you should know the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. In the aerobic respiration takes place in presence of oxygen, carbon dioxide, water and energy or the byproduct. More energy is released and glucose is broken down completely in aerobic respiration. Then you have to write the equation for aerobic respiration. And then you know C6, H12, O6 plus 6O2 will give 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus 2900 kJ energy. Similarly so for anaerobic respiration, takes place in the absence of oxygen then carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol or lactic acid or the byproduct less energy is released and glucose is not broken down completely and normally this uh, type of our anaerobic respiration takes place in bacteria, yeast 
and then in some muscle cells during heavy work or heavy exercise. Then you have to write the equation for hmm, anaerobic respiration. I hope you understand this. Huh? So this is respiration in animals. Sorry. Huh? This is respiration in animals. Whereas same respiration is taking place in plants also. <coughs> right? This respiration it is taking place in plants also as respiration taking place in plants also and that is mainly taking place through the opening called stomata. Uh, stomata, this is a structure called stomata having a bean shaped cell having a bean shaped cell this is called god cell bean shaped cell called god cell with the nucleus and chloroplast and these are called epidermal cells these are epidermal cells okay Normally in green plants, this is the structure of leaf when we take a transfer section with the upper and lower epidermis. Structure will be like this. Upper and lower epidermis. Now on the surface of the epidermis, this stomata are present. You will have put here a leaf but will be having a big structure. Chariya. So we find this uh, stomatal opening by the closing and opening of the stomata that is exchange of gases taking place. <coughs> Normally stomata are meant for exchange of gases. What are the gases to be exchanged during photosynthesis? Carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is given out and during respiration oxygen is taken in carbon dioxide is given out and during transpiration this excess water is evaporated in the form of water vapor that is also done through this stomata okay. now in plants during respiration oxygen is taken in yeah at the same time plants during photosynthesis, oxygen is released. So that released oxygen, or the oxygen that is evolved, can also be taken by the green plants for respiration. And normally photosynthesis will occur only during daytime. So that oxygen when the plants are taking for respiration, then it is said to be photorespiration. I hope you understand. Hmm? So in plants, photorespiration is also taking place. What is that? When the plants utilize oxygen for respiration, which is released during photosynthesis, it is said to be photorespiration. I hope you understand this. Huh? Then, so this is for respiration in plants. And again, in uh, Respiration in plants, it is mainly as exchange of gases. Then you should know the structure of stomata. And then in uh, old stem, the woody bark, in the maracalel, scratch mari, palmarma bark, which is a very special. So in old stem, the woody bark, it is having an opening called the lenticels. It is called lenticel. So respiration can take place through this opening lenticels. So the roots of plants also need oxygen. Root has taken oxygen from the air spaces present between the soil particles. And the over watering plants can kill them because 
the air spaces between the soil particles get filled with water so the roots cannot breathe. So we should be careful while watering the plant. Mangrove trees that is Abyssinia, we have breeding root modification and the mangrove trees which grow in marshy area that is the soil which is deficit of oxygen. That our example Abyssinia and Rhizopoda. Abyssinia is a tree, it will be having a normal root system but at the same time it is not having sufficient oxygen. So surrounding the a tree there are pillar like projection that is called breeding root or nematophores otherwise it is aerial root through that oxygen is taken in whereas in aquatic plants in floating plants stomata are on the upper surface of the leaf and submerged plants do not have stomata so gas exchanges taking place directly between the cells and the water. Water la dissolved oxygen like the cocoon. And most aquatic plants have air spaces in the leaves because they have more intercellular spaces, air and caiman and stem to store and transport oxygen. In floating plant, they help the plant to float freely. I hope you are able to follow this. Huh? So this is for respiration where we have, you should know the respiratory organs in lower organisms and then human respiratory system, structure of lungs, mechanism of respiration, cellular respiration as aerobic and anaerobic respiration and then respiration in plants. These are the portions we have discussed today. So prepare well for the exam. Wish you all the best. We will continue in the next session. Thank you.